Bibles, let's open those up. Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, we'll be looking at verse 28 today. And for you that have been a Christian for any length of time, you probably have heard Romans 8, 28, right? It's something that we love to quote. I hope that you would even take some time and try to put this verse to memory, really store it in the file cabinet of your brain, because it's the Holy Spirit will use this verse in your life so many times to encourage you, no matter what is, a, is ahead, even what is behind, uh, the Holy Spirit will use this verse to encourage you. And Paul here says, Romans 8, verse 28, says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Now, this is an amazing area of Scripture, and Paul kind of just jumps right in here. He's talking about how the Holy Spirit will give us victory over our flesh, over this world. You know, Jesus told us before he went to the cross, he told his disciples, and really to you and I as well, he said, it's better that I go. It's better that I'm not actually physically there with you, because if I go, the Comforter will come, and he called the Comforter the Holy Spirit. He'll lead you into all truth. He will counsel you. He'll give you illumination into the things of God. And he won't be alongside of you. The Holy Spirit is alongside of us before we're saved. When we're saved, there in uh, John chapter 20, when Jesus comes into the upper room, the Bible says he breathes on the disciples and they receive the Holy Spirit inside of them. The Greek word en, into them. It's Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that the Bible promises the Holy Spirit's not going to be alongside of you. When you're saved, he'll come into you. But then to empower you and and prepare you for ministry, Acts 1, 8 says the Holy Spirit will come upon you. So he won't be alongside of you. The Greek word is para. He won't be inside of you, or he will be, but that's salvation. That's E-N. He'll come inside of you to save you. But then to empower you for ministry, Acts 1, 8, you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes Upon you, that's the Greek word epi, and he'll rest upon you. He'll overflow you. And Paul here says, as that's happening, as the Holy Spirit is coming upon you, as you're not just focusing on the flesh, you're not feeding the flesh, but you're not programming against it, you're turning on the light, you're beginning to be filled with the Spirit, you're walking in the Spirit, you're a son of God, you're a daughter of God, you're being led by the Spirit. Romans 8, 28, Paul says, and we know. Now, if you have your pen, underline that. You know, that's true. Something really challenging or difficult or trialsome or discouraging can happen to a child of God. If you're a child of God that's being filled with the Spirit, that's walking in the Spirit, that's not just focusing on the flesh or even focusing on conquering the flesh, but you K-N-O-W. It's not no, 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 but it's no, no, no. It's K-N-O-W, knowing I need to be filled with the Spirit. If that's happening, listen, challenges happen, troubles come, groanings take place, and the Bible says, and we know, we still know it. We know it. We know. What do we know? Paul says, all things work together for good. Some of us, if we're honest, we circle all things, and in the margin of our Bible, we put, yes, maybe some things. Maybe some things work together for good, but you know the Spirit of God inside of us. Our flesh says some things work together for good, but not this thing. This is the one that's going to do us in. This is the one that's going to finish us off. But the Spirit of God inside of us, as we're walking with the Lord, says all things work together for good to those who love God. You know, just love the Lord. Just love Him. You know, some, some folks are trying so hard to be good Christians. And really, I just encourage you, just learn to, to fall in love with the Lord. Enjoy Him. Like Him. Like Him. Love Him. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. God has a purpose. He has a plan for you. He's called you. He's called you by name. He's saved you. He's washed you in the blood of Jesus. He's washed you in the water of his word. He's filled you with the Holy Spirit. He's called you for a purpose. And the trials, even the suffering, is not by accident because all things are working together for good. And can I say this? The Spirit of God inside of you, you already know this. So walk like it today. Father, today we thank you for Romans 8, verse 28. God, we pray that we would never forget that all things work together for good to those who, are, who love God and are called 
according to his purpose. And may we believe that today, no matter what comes, may we trust you. May we know this. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.